Good morning once again and welcome to our legal program, The Law. An Abuja division of the Court of Appeal has nullified the October 2016 judgment of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, which found the former Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godsday Orubebe, guilty of false asset declaration. The CCT, led by its chairman Dan Ladi Umar, had ruled that the prosecution had proven its case against Mr. Rubebe and confiscated the asset, a landed property, located at number 2057 Asokora, Buja. Mr. Rubebe's lawyer, Selekowe Larry, told the tribunal that the property was already sold to a company, Diversion Properties Limited. The tribunal, however, found Mr. Rubebe liable on the grounds that the documents indicating that the property was sold were not legally sufficient to prove a transfer of property. However, in a ruling on Wednesday at the Court of Appeal, a three-member panel of judges led by Abdul Aboki, uh, Honorable Justice Abdul Aboki, said the documents presented at the lower court were sufficient to indicate transfer of ownership. The court also ruled that Mr. Rubebe was not expected by law to declare an asset he had already sold. The Court of Appeal therefore reversed the decision of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, discharged and acquitted Mr. Orubebe. In a more recent development, the Code of Conduct Tribunal, CCT, trying Senate President Bukola Saraki over alleged false declaration of assets when he was governor of Kwara State, on Wednesday upheld the note case submission of the Senate President and consequently discharged him of all 18 counts against him by the federal government. Chairman of the tribunal, Dan Ladumar, in a ruling on the no-case submission filed by the defendant held that the prosecution failed to establish a prima facie case against Saraki. The tribunal stated that the evidence of the prosecution witnesses were manifestly unreliable, adding that no court, no court could attach value to it, not to talk of convic convicting on it. According to the tribunal, the testimony of the third prosecution witness who admitted that his report was based on information from his team members rendered the whole evidence linking the defendant to the alleged offences invalid. Ladies and gentlemen, the Danladi Umar led two-man panel of CCT had resolved its ruling after hearing Saraki's no-case submission and the federal government's objection to it on the 8th of June. Recall that Honorable Justice Adini Adimola whose arrest and arraignment left majority of Nigerians horrified, was also acquitted based on a no-case submission. Recall that he was arraigned alongside his wife and Joe Aggie, S.A.N. Big media splash. I'm joined on the program to discuss these issues by Mr. Ola Adeosho. He's a legal practitioner and uh, he practices here in Ibadan, Oyo State. Good morning, Mr. Ola Adeosho. Good morning, Tokwe. Good morning to you. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Thank you for bringing me. You're welcome. For the benefit of those who may not know, what does a no-case submission mean? Well, uh, no-case submission arises uh, at the conclusion of evidence of the prosecution in a criminal trial, wherein uh, the defense, the defense counsel, oh having looked through the evidence uh, presented by the prosecution, mm. realizes in their opinion that uh, based on the evidence exhibits uh, presented before the courts, mm. there could be no, there is nothing linking the defendant or accused person mm. to the charge before the courts. Mm. And uh, after presenting their no case submission, it is for the court to look through the evidence before it mm look at the charge and uh, look at the issues against the defendant. Hmm. If there's anything, if there's nothing, I mean, uh, in the evidence, hmm. actually connecting the defendant to the allegations contained in the charge, hmm. then the court will be left with no option but to discharge and acute that defendant. Hmm. However, there's this caveat. Uh, it does not mean to say that that defendant had not committed the offense. Mm. Uh, but it actually means that the prosecution has not done its job well or mm. might have not done its job well. That Thank is, you. if it is true the defendant had actually committed the offense, mm. uh, the court cannot, on the basis of the evidence, mm. I mean, would not be able to find the defendant guilty. Mm. And at that point, it is not whether the defendant is guilty or not that is mm. an issue. 
what will be an issue is whether there is a prima facie there, there is from the evidence there is yeah. prima, prima facie facts hmm. or evidence uh that would that the court would not be clear about hmm. that would need the defendant to come and clarify based oh. on the evidence that they, hmm. you know but where there is nothing like that and in most cases uh we, we get to that stage in the course of prosecution and defense hmm. where the defense counsel had uh, cross-examined the witnesses of the prosecution mm. to the extent that the witnesses of the prosecution had made certain statements in the course mm. of their evidence yeah. showing that there is doubt that they've mm. not really done their work, they have not completed their job. Mm. And uh, it is the law that uh, when there is any lacuna mm. in the course of evidence, such lacuna must be resolved in favor of a defendant. Thank you. What then is the implication of an acquittal based on a no-case submission? The implication is that that charge can never be brought again. So he's been That acquitted? is the end of it. That's the end unless, of the case. Unless if that decision by the court is set aside by an appellate court. Hmm. Oh, 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 now, where the defense gets an acquittal on a no-case submission without even joining issues on the charges, like you said, what does that say about the case presented by the prosecution? Well, uh, it may not be, it may not say fundamentally anything about the case, but about the evidence of the prosecution. Uh, it goes along. It, the implication is that the prosecution, the investigators, it's either the investigators have not done their work, they, they they've not completed their job, or the prosecution has not done its job properly, hmm. or both. That's the implication. Hmm. Now, Sarakis' no case submission was upheld because one. Uh, that the admittance, because of the admittance of the first prosecution witness under cross-examination, that the defendant was not invited for clarification on the gray areas in his asset form grossly affected the competence of the charges. One, that's one. Two, the testimony of the key witness was based on hearsay. Three, the claim by the second prosecution witness that all documents he had linking Saraki to the alleged offenses were lost in a fire accident. Now, Based on the foregoing, the tribunal therefore agreed with Saraki and upheld his no-case submission. Prosecution was represented, or the team now, was led by Olu Jacobs, or Rotimi Jacobs SAN, a respected member of the bar. What do you think would have been the circumstances that compelled him to have gone forward with this case, despite the quality of evidence they were about to mount? Look, Tokwe, uh... I I don't know an hypocrite. I can be blunt when the need arises. You will recall that I was on this platform, I mean on this station at probably another platform that a key trial started. Yeah, many months ago. And um, my position was clear and I still stand by my position then. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the fact that they brought Saraki before the court not tribunal hmm. uh, in my opinion was not born out of altruism it wasn't born out of the fact that they wanted Saraki convicted it wasn't because really yes that's my opinion and I stand by it it wasn't because uh, Saraki is corrupt I have said it times without number the general opinion in Nigeria is that the Saraki family is a corrupt one I stand to be contradicted that's, that's the op general opinion, opinion on the streets on the streets by your uh, yeah going by your by my by data, by, by my research, and uh, he may not be corrupt, he may not be corrupt in reality, hmm. but that's the opinion. Hmm. Now, uh, nobody went after both the father while he was alive and the son, you know, despite the ban of allegations of family. Hmm. And at a point when the last government went against this guy, uh, this uh, Bukola Saraki, the, this, the same set of people who eventually prosecuted him were the one that says that said the PDP government was was victimizing him oh. at that time and uh, at, at another point when it became i mean obvious that they were having political differences mm. because he wanted to be senate president and they don't want him they have their own people yeah you know at that point they hurriedly brought him before the code of conduct tribunal mm. after he had the major senate president to frustrate him to ensure that he's out oh. but because the man was born into politics mm. he's a politician he was born into politics trained with politics mm. you know all his life he had always been, been spending politics money. He has always lived in politics. Mm. So he understood the game and, and he went for it. He played it. He joined issues with them politically. Mm. And eventually, those who were at the forefront 
of the prosecution became his best of friends and he, he was able to divide the gang that was mm. against him and that same gang eventually told his line but at the outset i said it i said i i, I mean i didn't see it. I, even when i have not seen the facts mm. of the case i said it's a political matter well, and it would be resolved politically when you say they them who are they i mean the 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 the, the, the people within the presidency i mean the, the the apc leadership the core apc leadership at that time the, both the, in lagos and abuja the people within the presidency would include the AG, the Attorney exactly, General of the Federation, exactly, exactly. would possibly include Professor Sage, Professor of Law, SAN. Well, Professor Sage, VP, look, look. Osimba Jo, Tope, SAN, Professor of Law. Tope, let's not waste our time. Professor Sage only talks, with the greatest respect to him, is not in government. He only talks and talks and talks. At times, he just talks off, off tracks. That's my opinion of him, with the greatest respect to him, probably because he's now an old man. And he allows himself to be used. I mean, to, 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 to say certain things uh, on behalf of, the, of, of these politicians, I mean, which to some of us uh, isn't the best for him. You know, but the truth of the matter is that the Saraki case from the outset was a political one. Hmm. And I know it would end in a political manner, Dito, which is what has happened. Dito Justice Ademola's case? No, but Justice Ademola's case isn't a political case because i don't know the details of course he said he had personal problem with the attorney general hmm. while he was sitting in Kano, i think and that uh, uh he, the adjoint, attorney general committed certain infractions and hmm. he wrote petitions against him hmm. and i mean for about four years until uh until he had to pull withdraw his petition yeah the attorney general w- w- couldn't attain the rank of senior advocate of nigeria hmm. and that the attorney general thereafter promised him that he would get back at him and mm. that that was exactly what what was playing out. Uh, let us say that that was not what happened, or that was not the basis mm. for his arrest. Looking at what happened in that case, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the investigation, the investigators in that case did a shady job. They didn't do their work well. Mm. Listening to the, I mean, going through the evidence of the of of, of the principal witness of the prosecution in that mm. case. You know, mm. I wouldn't have prosecuted that kind of case Thank if you. I were the prosecuting counsel. Now, one would wonder how the federal government would have gone on with that case the way it did with the, the Ministry of Justice at its disposal, the Attorney General, the VP, SAN, then Professor, then it, it, Professor it, it, Sage. It returns us to the issue of people having vested interests, huh. people wanting to ridicule somebody. Recall that uh, Justice Ademola, I mean, gives rulings and judgments against uh, uh, against t- sitting governments. Mm. He did it against the Jonathan government and mm. he did it several against this government. You recall the Buhari's case mm. when uh, at a point when some PDP people brought up a case wanting to stop General Buhari from contesting. It was just, just Ademola that said no. You know, he ruled against the, the sitting government at that time. Mm. I mean, courageously. Mm. I mean, no, 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 ju- no, just any judge wouldn't have done yeah. that. But he did it. And when this government came about to Recall, it was one that granted bail to Dasuki against yeah. the interest of those in the presidency. Hmm. It was one that granted bail to, uh, I think, Nam Dikano. Hmm. It was one that granted bail to, I, I mean, series of cases against this, against the system. Hmm. You know, when looking at it, in his opinion, he feels they have not done what they should do. I mean, he gives rulings against them, and that shows courage. Hmm. And now bringing in the issue of his personal issues with the sitting attorney general, huh. who is the chief law officer and chief prosecutor of mm. any matter. Yeah. I mean, you you but sincerely looking at just Admiral's case, for me, I think uh if they were sincere, mm. they might have gotten just Admiral convicted. I mean, you 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 found a whooping sum of 30 million naira and you did not proceed. Mm. I mean, from the evidence one of the witnesses, the, the, the star witness of government of the prosecution in that case said it that the 30 million naira from their investigation, they didn't link it to any offense. They didn't link it, link it to, to being a bribe money. Mm. And in that situation, what do you want the court to do? You want the court to still find him guilty? You want the court to call him to come and still enter defense? Defense against what? Yeah. When the prosecution said the money is not bribe money, the money is not linked to any offense. So in that situation, you won't expect any sane, huh. go, any sane court to call him to enter any defense. The, There's no basis for a defense. Yes. But if they have proceeded huh. after discovering that money to investigate... Hmm. How that money, where that money came from, the link of the account and the rest of it, I can assure you they might have gotten somewhere with it. But looking at it, the, the entirety of the case, you realize that, in fact, it was more of an act of vindictiveness. The, the NJC 
has recalled Honorable Justice Ademola. In fact, he has resumed sitting. And all of a sudden, of course, the federal government was unequivocal. Uh, and uh, the federal government made scathing remarks against the NJC about that. How, why the NJC would recall Justice Ademola and other judges who were accused of uh, corruption. All of a sudden, it's in the news this morning that the EFCC might open, reopen an investigation into some allegations against the CCT Justice chair. Remember that during the week, the EFCC had rushed to quickly one of the justices. What does this mean? What do these developments mean to you? Tokwe, I also recall that on your program here, a uh, month ago, I've said it, that we started the war against Kong. As it is now, and I'm being, I'm being vindicated by the day. Uh, when this whole thing started, mm. I mean, I was one of those who said it, that uh, the EFCC is not really doing what it ought to do. Dan Ladi Umar, with the greatest respect to him, I mean, the, 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 priest, the chair, chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, I mean, had pending corruption cases against him. Mm. But the FCC, this same FCC, came out officially to say we have no case against him. Huh. I mean, somebody alleged that he, he sought for, he asked for a bribe hmm. from him. He sent his PA, the money was paid, blah, blah, blah. But the PA was charged. A case of uh, uh, always looking for the underdog, always trying to... So the, D, the PA was charged and the PA was insisting, my boss sent me to collect this money. It wasn't mine. So now that the judgment against the system, hmm. I mean, whether genuinely or I mean, they were underhand tactics, but the truth I know hmm. is that that case would fall like a pack of cards, like it had fell, hmm. like it had fallen. You hmm. know, I'm not surprised. But I mean that yes, if it is true that the FCC is now going after Danladi Omar, it is it is it is unfortunate. The implication is that we'll continue to do this merry-go-round, hmm. the same thing that we have been going through over the years. Hmm. It means we will not move forward, hmm. and until when those uh, 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 are the, at the helm of affairs, those who hmm. are saddled with the responsibility of fighting corruption, hmm. genuinely starts to what, fight corruption. What will be the implication of this trend, even on the judiciary? Like uh, of course I've said it that we'll continue to merry go round. We'll not move forward. Judges, I mean. Well, uh, it, it, it is unfortunate, and I must say that uh, it, it didn't start today. You know, it started with the invasion of homes of judges in the middle of the night, like armed robbers in the middle of the night. I mean, the attempt is just to cow judges, is to make judges not to be independent. But mm. like I've said, and I've, I've said before ju judges and justices, mm. that it is only judges who are skeleton or corpses in their mm. wardrobes that will be afraid. Mm. Judges that are honest, judges that are sincere and consistent, mm. who have nothing to fear, you know, and that is the truth. You know, most of these judges, like the NJC rightly said, I mean, when uh, this uh, Okoye Obla, I mean, spoke like a garage tout with due respect to him. Hmm. I mean, a presidential advice on prosecution. You know, when he spoke like a garage tout and disparaged the judicial system, disparaged the NJC and the justice system hmm. for the failure of the executive. It is embarrassing. The NJC, against all known rules, norms, and laws, asked these judges, I mean, suspended these judges on mere allegation. It is against all known laws. It, it is not done anywhere in the world. You don't suspend a judge because somebody alleges him. You know, but the NJC went out of his way in breach of the law, suspended the justices, mm. waiting for the prosecution or the federal government, the executive, to do their job and charge these people to court. What mm. do they have? We're able to have only about three of them charged to court. I mean, after eight months, the NJC decided to sit. In fact, mm. even before then, according to the NJC, they had meetings with the with the Attorney General of the Federation, with the Presidential Advisory Committee mm. on Corruption and the rest of it. What are you guys doing? We can't continue to hold these people down. They are on suspension even when nobody has found them guilty. Mm. And after months and nothing happened, after about eight months, they decided to recall them. And immediately they recalled them, look at what happened. Overnight, one of the judges was already arraigned in court. I mean, mm. you understand that it is a kind of Baba Salah Allow that carry carry mm. arrangements where nobody seems to be serious. Mm. I mean, where somebody just wants to act that we are doing something when nothing is doing, when nothing is happening. Mr. Ola Adioshun, thank you very much for being on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. On this program, we we discuss the law. The program is called the law, and we discuss not only what the law is, but also what the law should be. Ten twenty-five. That's it on the breakfast show for this week. God willing, I'll see you next week. 
Thank you for listening. Good morning. We must never lose sight of the fact 